lights off because I'm just using the PowerPoint to talk to you about some stuff and then we'll put the lights up so you can look at some things, okay? So, um, what we're going to do today is we'll have a look at some, uh, I'm going to talk about this assignment briefly shortly, okay? Um, and we've got some examples of some previous assignments from previous years as well which you can have a look at and I'll talk to you again about those more shortly. Um, but first I'll just give you a reminder, thank you so um, that we, you know, we've got quite a lot more to do. So there was a, a small number of people um, were kind of saying they were slightly twitchy and nervous about the module, I think because they wanted to talk a bit more about the assignments and stuff. Stuff we were going to do anyway, but I brought folks to talk about. However, I do want to point out that we've got a little few weeks of this term left yet, yeah? and we've got 12 weeks next term. Yeah? So, just because we're talking about this assignment now, some people might think, well, we've got a fairly limited range of topics that we can look at this assignment. No, you've got a huge range of stuff, but lots of people haven't looked at it yet. Because okay? we just got a whole term and not this term to do with it. So do bear that in mind when we look at the assignment shortly. So I'm going to flag up some of the stuff that we're going to be covering in term two. Bear this in mind because it might be that the stuff that you want to do with the assignment that we get to cover in term two. Okay? And also crucially, like we've said we're going to do, is that we're going to revisit some things from term one in term two, as well as introducing some new things. Okay? So I'm just going to go through that to start with, because I think you'll find it useful to have a reminder uh, about all the stuff we get to look at. Then I'll talk to you briefly, specifically about the assignment, and I've got some paper copies of it for you to look at. Um, the electronic version has been up there since the you know, very start of term, um, but occasionally people like to scribble on them, and etc, etc. And you can look at some previous pieces of work and stuff. Okay, so, um, ignoring the fact that we're looking at drones next week, and we've got very some things yet to do for term one, because we've got a few weeks of term one left, okay? Um, here's a kind of um, a, a rough outline of the stuff we're looking at in term two. Okay. Um, at some point, we have to do the EBSIS survey and maybe something else that I'm asked to do. <coughs> so I may shuffle things around slightly. Okay. I may also, in order to keep it very topical, move things slightly. So, for example, we've got one on Brexit, which I may move the timing of it slightly. Okay. But I'm just going to go through and briefly talk about these. Right. So, um, and again, these slides. Um, I'll make, I'll put online once we've had your session uh, here. So, um, starting with kind of um, term one or term two, so I did flag up, we're going to look at, go back and look at some topics in the more kind of case study thing. So, I'm going to look at revenge on a particular issue, um, look at some of the individual cases that brought it into being, okay, why was it a particular issue, look at how revenge on evolved as a law in England and Wales and a couple of the American states as well, okay. Um, this is an interesting one to look at because this is a good example where we can look at a specific issue, right? But also there are lessons there and things we can generalise out to the issues of technology generally, okay? So we know that often the law struggles to keep up with kind of social practices, etc., etc. Um, so this is quite a good one because what we can do is we can look at the specific legislation that's been used before this came in. We can look in some detail at that specific legislation that came in, so called revenge problem, of course it's not actually called that uh, legally, right? And also a sense of timeline, so where was it that people were saying, God, there's a real problem here with this, how come this isn't illegal, or how come nobody's been charged with it, okay? And eventually we saw um, um, people sort of picking up the cause and saying, actually, yeah, we need to put through this particular thing. So in Scotland, of course, they put through a specific kind of revenge problem um, things sometime before we had it in England and Wales, and a number of American states have probably never run out. This is also still very typical, I know it's only um, to typical, topical. Um, on the, um, the last couple of days, um, again, there's been some people looking at this because um, what they're saying that's interesting is that the revenge porn legislation, okay, um, it's been framed as a kind of a communication case. <coughs> okay, so it is a criminal act, but it's seen as a communication crime rather than a sexual crime. Okay? Why is that relevant? Well, it's relevant because um, where we have serious sexual crimes in England and Wales, okay, so a case of instances of rape and of serious sexual assaults, right, then the victim okay, automatically gets anonymity. Right? 
But revengeful, because it's seen as a communication crime, primarily rather than a sexual crime, okay, it means that if you go to court to prosecute somebody because you're a victim of revenge porn, then right, your identity is made known. Your identity isn't protected, right? And some of the victims, again, you'll see them talking about this quite eloquently, are saying, if I was the victim of another type of sexual crime, and really this is a sexual crime, not communication crime, then I would get anonymity. Instead, right, my character has been talked about and vilified in the public arena. It's been talked about in mainstream media, it's been talked about in social media, etc., etc., etc. Okay? Um, what's also quite useful is we've also just got some new statistics coming out, which gives us a sense of the sense that what proportion of these offences are getting reported and what proportion are ended up in prosecutions, okay? And it's quite a low figure as we see um, with rape offences, for example. Um, cyber abuse generally um, will go back to specifically, probably look at Amanda Todd and Taylor Parsons. I might switch that slightly just because Amanda Todd's you know, a really kind of moving one to look at. It's kind of led with a few things, so I might use Amanda, but we'll just look at two or three things in detail about what was it happened to these people, and again, how come the law didn't seem to protect them, were they also victims of kind of multiple secondary victimisation as well as their primary victimisation, and what happened as a response to it. And again, I'll pick out two or three, because often what happened in these instances where people ended up taking their own lives, for example, is that. Um, as a result of it, specific legislation came about where general legislation hadn't protected these people. And also very often there was an educational legacy, a social legacy. So in many instances, um, the each of victims, what the families do, as a, partly as a memorial to it, is there's often been kind of trusts and foundations set up to help educate people, help support people, other potential future victims. So it's a classic example then of how we respond both legally and kind of socially, educationally, to this kind of thing, okay? So again, we've, we've touched upon them briefly, but we'll go back and look at them in more details and go through. Um, I'm going to look at, um, specifically the case of kind of a nice combination of like sex, social media and serial killing. We'll look at Stephen Paul, the case of Stephen Paul. Um, he was somebody who used social media to communicate with his victims, okay? So he went on um, kind of various dating sites and he used services like Grindr, for example. There's also other services. So a lot of people, um, especially um, if they're looking to find sexual partners, will either use websites, social networking sites, dedicated websites, or use apps and stuff, okay? So the apps, for example, will let you register and in some instances it will alert you, okay? So if another person on the app that is, is looking for um, certainly a meet up, often implicitly somebody's meet up for sex, okay? It kind of says, oh, Bill, there's somebody who meets your profile requirements, they're 200 meters away, right? So do you want to go and meet them? That kind of thing. I'm simplifying it, but that's the just kind of thing. Um, and again, he was interested because as part of this, uh, there's a whole subculture around chemsex, okay? So a lot of these people, when they were um, consensually having sex, would often take um, a combination of uh, different kind of drugs and stuff as part of that sexual experience, right? And he again took advantage of this because when he was about to have sex with and then murder the young men that he was killing, right, uh, they weren't necessarily surprised to be under the influence of drugs because this was part of the expected experience. But of course what he then did was kind of, he wasn't necessarily giving them the drugs they were expecting, etc., in the doses that they were expecting. Um, so that's, that's interesting, and it also comes up interestingly because um, the police received some criticisms around Stephen Paul and how long it took so long to realise there was a pattern that was going on here. And it wasn't a police officer, it was just a member of the public, I think it was somebody linked to one of the families, um, who kind of looked on, you know, like um, Google Earth, um, Google Maps, and kind of looked at where the killings are taking place and thought, hang on, these, these killings are taking place really closely together. How come the police haven't picked up on that? So again, that was an interesting example of where then the kind of technology that's available to us came in to shed some light on some events that take place. Um, and again, we can go <coughs> through the sleep reports, we've gone through the courts, he's been convicted, so we can look, there's a lot of detail that came out. So you can imagine um, this was sex, drugs, you know, uh, underground gay sex or GC, etc., etc. A lot of coverage in the mainstream media, okay? 
Um, and then a lot of kind of more serious coverage that came up once it went to be thought. So it's an interesting one to look at. Brings lots of different aspects together, reflects stuff that we're also looking at as well. Um, to Facebook, we'll have a look at this one, social media companies and social responsibilities. Um, a lot of the big social media companies, but Facebook especially, under a lot of pressure at the moment. Uh, lots of issues around kind of um, what they're doing with our data. Are they being too lax with third parties harvesting our data, etc., etc.? Okay. Um, and Facebook's especially under pressure because Facebook covered up um, the apparent involvement of individuals from Russia and possibly state-sponsored individuals in trolling and manipulating and putting fake news out um, during the American presidential campaign. Okay. Facebook's own security team had a look at this, decided it was a big, major, genuine problem, uh, but other management at Facebook said, no, we're not going to talk about this, we're not going to talk about Russian involvement in detail, um, we'll effectively put out a whitewash report that doesn't cover it in detail. That since has come to light, okay? Um, there's a lot of pressure now on Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg, um, oh, Sheryl Sandberg, yeah, Sheryl Sandberg, um, um, to, Sheryl, I've got the name now, come back to me. Okay, Matt Zuckerberg and Cheryl, maybe it's Sandler actually, um, right, to, to possibly um, be removed from the head of the company. So it might be by the time we get there that Matt Zuckerberg, he set up Facebook, he's associated with it, kind of it's his company, he's currently the kind of the chief person there. Um, he, he may well not be the chief person in Facebook for much longer, okay? But, Companies like Facebook are very, very powerful, okay, and they've been manipulated and they've been abused. And there are definitely issues here where people have almost certainly um, been guilty of criminal offences. So this is why we're interested, okay? So there is this is slight blurring around kind of politics and international relations, but clearly there's the issue of criminal offences being committed, um, and that's why we're it's relevant to us, okay? Um, and again. Where we've got people engaged in things like um, trolling and stuff, okay, and generally kind of um, stirring things up, it goes back to other issues around trolling and stuff that we looked at previously. Um, Brexit we'll have a look at because we want to have a look at it. It's a classic case of social media manipulation, some of it again linked to Facebook, but not just Facebook. Um, Twitter also had big issues. Lots of illegality, lots of this thing taking advantage of the kind of international nature of the internet, taking advantage of the fact that it crosses lots of jurisdictions and highlighting how people are using technology, including social media, to hyper-target people, but also how our legislative framework and structures haven't kept up with that, okay? So I think like the Electoral Commission and stuff really struggled to deal with how people were effectively breaking the law, right? And have, uh, no doubt about it, a number of the, um, the parties involved in Brexit have broken the law, right? So we're interested in that because they are criminals, they are committing criminal offences, that's a matter of record, okay? Um, um, whatever your views on Brexit and whatever your views on about the politics, this is the criminal manipulation of data and we're interested in it. Can lessons be learned from it so that we can reduce social harm in the future, etc., etc. Uh, privacy surveillance, we're going to come back and look at. We've touched upon um, briefly, but we will come back and it comes up in a number of the things. But specifically, let's have a look at some lessons from China. Um, we can look at other places as well, we might bring some other examples in, but in China it's kind of very organised, very open, very high level, where we've got um, uh, citizens are now kind of being, you know, going to be given these kind of social ratings, uh, a bit like an episode from Black Mirror, so people are kind of, they're bringing in a system to effectively give people a kind of social rating, okay? Um, we also know that the Chinese internal security forces, including the Chinese police and stuff, are very equipped to, um, they're using things like facial recognition technologies, they're using things like augmented reality, um, um, glasses and stuff like that. This has also been used in the United States, the Middle East and other places, but it's been particularly systematic in the scale of it being rolled out in China. Are there lessons for us, things that we want to be interested in? Okay? And then, of course, <coughs> yes, we're definitely interested in some of these issues of privacy surveillance, which again link back to how we connect with our social media companies, so on and so forth. Um, companies like Cambridge Analytica and stuff that we've been doing, etc. Um, robots overload, so overhypes, or all overhypes, would be all overhypes. Again, we're going to look specifically um, at robots as a kind of a physical manifestation of technology and high tech crime. Um, 
Police are certainly using robots. Robots have been used to kill criminals. Robots are increasingly being used, robots and drones, for all kinds of policing operations. Okay? So this isn't just the kind of um, sci-fi speculative thing, this is kind of hardcore, hardwired out there now. So in places like Dubai, they're building out autonomous vehicles and robots. Uh, they're using robots in various parts of the United States, okay? uh, as well as other countries, and there's a big development stuff around here. So again, we have to think now about the ethics of using things like robots and stuff for things like policing. Okay? So a lot of it might be policing where they've got security robots and shopping malls and stuff, um, but also where the Dallas police, for example, used the bomb disposal robot, but equipped with a bomb, and they used it to kill somebody who was an active shooter. Okay? So these are things that we need to look at and think about. Also, you know, things like, well, you know, can, can robots arrest people, for example? So if you bring in robot policemen, the problem is normally with policemen, um, you know, and women, is that police officers are warranted, they are granted a warrant of this country that gives them the powers of arrest, right? And that's because we can put that upon an individual. Can we put the powers of arrest onto a robot? Um, is it alright if it's remotely controlled, but what if it's autonomous, etc., etc., okay? So again, this isn't just wishy washy sci fi, this is looking at very practical issues that come out. Yeah, how can inactivism revisited? And uh, we'll go back and look at it uh, from a particular perspective. Um, I was saying to the morning group that um, a couple of these things I can firm up partly in response and get a sense of what people would want to look at as a particular example. Otherwise, I will just choose one and how it fits in um, with other things that we're looking at. Okay? Um, Cyber preparation, it won't necessarily be in this week, um, but at some point again, we'll come back and look at the assignment in detail in the second term. Okay? Um, and hopefully at that point we'll get to do some exercises where people have got to a point where actually you know what topics you want to look at, etc, etc. And of course you've got your formative assignment that's built into the next term as well. Okay? Um, again, we'll also have a thing where we look at high tech crime without computers. Um, high tech crime doesn't have to involve computers, so Stephen Paul is an abuse of um, chem sex and stuff that we've seen as that. There are lots of people who produce counterfeit drugs. Okay? So we can have high tech crime, it doesn't have to involve things like computers and hardware devices. But also, we've got some good examples of high tech crime where it might be, where we're modifying other pieces of technology, not necessarily things like computers. So, <coughs> in the case of the Las Vegas shooter, for example, and it's just over a year since there was a big shooter in Las Vegas, and this was somebody who modified a weapon, it was a legally owned weapon, but he made a modification to that weapon, okay, so he hacked the weapon, right? which meant it went from being a kind of semi-automatic to a fully automatic weapon, effectively. Right? And he killed dozens of people who were at a concert in Las Vegas and, and injured huge numbers more. Right? And when the police got up to his hotel room, you know, um, he, he set up kind of monitors that were looking at the corridor and stuff, so he was ready uh, for when the police responded, etc., etc. Okay? So this is the kind of thing that we can look at. And there's a few other instances where we can look at stuff. Again, it comes back to this definition what do we mean by technology? Okay, so let's not just think about computers and social media. We can think about uh, biosocial stuff, biochemical stuff, and also where people are modifying uh, existing weapons. But it's that kind of that hacking ethos where they're changing something, they're using technology to make a change to work with technology to make it much more deadly, for example. Okay? Um, the popular time is where we can have a look at what would happen um, if we kind of lost all this technology that we can rely on in what ways might we lose it, and what might the social and therefore the criminological consequences of that be. And again, this roots back to some, some, some specific case studies and advice that's been used by various governments. No good spies, we'll end up with a summary of the module key themes at some point as well. Okay? So I've flagged all that up just so that, you, that, that people realise you know, that we've got the rest of this term and then lots of stuff yet to cover in term two, a whole variety of stuff. Okay? And that's relevant so that when I kind of flag up in a moment um, what's up on, uh, on the assignment, right, it kind of makes a bit more sense. So I'm just going to spend, in a moment, I'm going to spend five minutes going through the assignment. I have some paper copies of it, actually, which I'll give out and you can just spread it around and think. I'm going to call up an electronic copy in the moment because, of course, an electronic copy of it's been available all year. Many of you are perhaps looking at it on your devices. Um, but actually, so if I just do the paper copies, if anyone wants a paper copy, then get a paper copy of it, okay? Um, just have yourself paper copies, but lots of people put it. 
Um, just before I do that, what's quite interesting is I've just been off talking to one of my dissertation students before I saw you lot. Went back to the office to check my email, okay? And when I went to check my email, I had this, this message in my email account, okay? Since it exists. So, our email system's quite good at keeping out spam and various other sort of things. Um, but I've got this one here. Presumably, if I were to click on the link, it would take me through to a site that would probably compromise the browser. It might download some kind of package onto our network, so our network people would be very happy about it, etc. etc. Okay? Um, but, and it's just come from some kind of site. Okay? So you seem to know how to turn it go along, blah, blah, blah. Okay? How about to meet the hot girl? I am free for you now, apparently, okay? And we've got the little selfie with the semi naked woman in the thing, okay? So it could be this is some kind of phishing attack, this is some kind of attempt to get me to click on a link to download the virus to the system, or maybe, okay, I click on the link and go through, maybe it might be linking me through to a sextortion site, for example, okay? But despite the hot girl who's ready to meet me now, I've chosen to come here and talk to you lot instead. Okay? So that email has now been deleted from my account because all the time the emails in the account have turned in. So I just thought this was a nice practical example of some of the kind of stuff that we talk about. And if you hear it's popped in there in my inbox. Okay, let me just talk to you briefly about the uh, assignment before I show you some examples of recent assignments. So, um, I talked about that. So, Okay, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but just to highlight the the variety, right, of potential responses and things you can look at in here. So we know you've got this template, okay, um, so you can write up to 3,000 words and there's all the uh, usual kind of stuff that lies elsewhere. But basically you've got a big choice of topics, but, but as well as the topics that are listed, okay, you'll see that the topics allow you to come at it from different angles, okay. So if I'm looking at copyright theft, then maybe I want to look at music piracy, maybe I want to look at gaming piracy, maybe I want to look at, right, more various stuff, I can do that. If I want to look at plastic car crime, then I can do that, okay? Um, and again, some of this stuff we've already covered, some of it we've partially covered, and some of it we'll get covered in turn two, so we'll be lots there. Um, drones, which I think we're looking at next week, again, uh, quite a few people did that last year, it's a very kind of straightforward topic to get your, your head around once, once you've been introduced to it. Um, hacking, again, it might be that you choose to do hacking, it might be that you're interested in where people hacked into systems and money for games, because people are, are hacking into banking systems or cryptocurrency vaults, you could do that. It might be that you're more interested in hacking from the point of view of kind of social activism and stuff, which is also mentioned further down. Uh, it might be you think, well actually I'm interested in hacking, but rather than hacking into banking systems and stuff, I, I quite like where people look to like hacking into celebrity iCloud accounts and stuff like that, where we had the fact meeting a few years ago, right? So, within these topics, what I'm saying is there's, there's a, a nice range of subtopics that you can address, okay? And if you're not sure if something's relevant or not, then just email me or just ask me one of the classes and check. Again, um, hacktivism, we believe, you know, we, we took on some of this and again, some of it in turn two, we'll look at a bit more. Um, harassment covers all kinds of stuff. So, whether it's um, cyber stalking or the bullying or workplace bullying or trolling. A lot of this was covered by a lot of social media things that we looked at the first few weeks. And again, we're going to come back in turn to and look at some specific in depth case studies where we had really serious kind of um, stalking and bullying and this kind of stuff. Um, hate crime, I'm, we're not doing this as a separate lecture on this, but I know it's covered on other modules. But hate crime, we do touch upon repeatedly again, partly because on social media, um, uh, a lot of people will be specifically abused because of their kind of uh, racial background. Um, a lot of women will be specifically abused, right, simply because they're women and they've got an opinion. And misogyny, okay, that which is what it is, okay, it's certainly abused as a hate crime here in somewhere like Nottingham. 
Longinshire, and it's been pushed to be kind of put on the statute books as a recognised hate crime more generally. Okay? Again, hate sites, again, in some instances, some people are quite interested in kind of um, hate sites, racial hatred sites, um, or sites that are really pushing particular calls. Some of this will um, we'll get touched upon again in turn two. We haven't spent much time on it, um, but again, some people, you know, if you're, it's an area of interest in, fantastic, and it comes up. These are getting slightly dated in some ways, other people are like, because a lot of the kind of specific hate sites that we used to look at, it's morphed into where people are just being kind of really horrible on social media. And by hate sites, where you've got things like dedicated neo-Nazi sites, uh, white power sites, uh, dedicated um, sites like that, okay? Whereas now you tend to get it on social media, and again, the, 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 kind of the other end of the spectrum, where you've got people promoting um, ISIS and promoting various kind of um, um, terrorist groups, etc. Um, a lot of it's now done through social media things rather than dedicated websites, okay? Um, but it's once you start looking at the area, you know it's interesting. Again, fraud. Um, we've looked at some issues around fraud and counterfeit goods, and we'll, we will come back and look at it in more detail. And it, it crops up um, in turn two. Organised crime. We don't have a specific session where we talk about organised crime, but we do look, keep looking at examples where organised crime are exploiting the technology. Okay. So we've touched upon it in a number of ways already. And again, in turn two, we'll look at some of the ways in which organised crime is exploiting stuff. Uh, one of them, for example, being again. Um, well, we've touched upon it with like sextortion, for example, and we'll come back and look at it again, or where we've got things like the live streaming of child sex abuse in places like the Philippines and so on, okay? Um, and again, organised crime, we touched upon it looking at cyber criticism. So there's a lot of stuff where we go back and look at it kind of explicitly, and a lot of stuff where we kind of link in, and you know, what, you know, we keep talking in one lecture that's a session on something, but we make the links into other sessions for you as well. Um, sex crimes, again, you know, whether it's revenge porn, or you're looking at sexting, or you're looking at sextortion, or you're looking at harassment. Um, sadly, there's a whole range of things to look at. Um, you know, from, from my point of view, in terms of topics, it's a kind of rich area to look at. We've already begun to look at it, and again, in terms of, we'll go back and look at this in more detail, case studies and specific legislation, etc., etc., okay? Social media comes a whole range of things, so whether it's libel, contempt of court, harassment, again, trolling, sex crimes. If there's particular things you found interesting, fantastic, go and look at it. And it may be that you, you've gone and done a bit of research into one of these areas, and you find that it links to a case that really interests you, perhaps the exploitation or an issue around a famous footballer or a particular celebrity or a politician or something. That's fine, you can choose to focus on that, but then look at how it kind of links into the modern world generally. And again, terrorism that we touched on in a number of ways, and again, we'll talk about um, issues around terrorism, counterterrorism, when we're looking at drones and robots and various other things, um, both this term and next term, okay? I'll unpack it and stuff like that. And then there's the one at the bottom, this is any other module, any other topic, okay? So basically, if there's anything you think is kind of interesting, uh, we may not have kind of talked about it explicitly, but it clearly links into lots of stuff around the module, then come and speak to me about it, okay? Um, somebody's already done that, and I've kind of went, yeah, that's fine, we want to do, but just check it's okay. Again, sometimes what it is, is that people are making, uh, and we encourage it, you know, people are making a link between this module and other modules that they're studying, or links between this module, okay, and what they're looking at for their dissertation. So that's fine. You can't self-plagiarise, of course, but if you're doing lots of research on a particular topic area, or you write a series of lectures on something, and again, I've had this discussion with some of my dissertation students where they're, they're bringing stuff in from other models and stuff, fine, that makes perfect sense, that's not a problem. Okay? Um, and again, you can see that there's a very interesting stuff, and in turn two, we'll have a session where we're looking in lots of more detail, okay? But this is, you know, there's a, a, a breakdown of a template to use, etc., etc., etc. Okay, let me, just because I'm conscious of time, uh, put the lights up. And you can have a look. I've got them up. Right, so what we've got here is we've got a number of um, <coughs> um, ones that have been done in the past, okay? So you can run down in the moment, come and get some. I suggest you have a quick look at one and then swap it for another one so you've got a sense of a couple of them, okay? <coughs> um, please don't be afraid the past. You well, you can, if you want to photograph them, that's fine, you can photograph them and stuff. And you'll, we'll have them again in term two, along with some from last year. Because last year and the year before, um, students generally got more feedback on them, which you'll find probably quite useful to look at, okay? But, go and have a look at these. These are just all from kind of two or three years ago. 
Um, this, the stuff that was given first, stuff that was given third, etc., etc., etc. So come down, have a look, have a look at the feedback, have a look at what it says, um, and then I'll spend um, a few minutes at the end talking to you about some of these. Okay? So this is a bit where if you want to get a copy, you have to come and move because these are all paper copies. Right? Okay. So at this bit, everyone's just looking at copy of exam papers. So I'm going to pause this and then I'll start again with all the summary of the exam papers. You've missed a bit. Okay, so so that's 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 a random reference from better. Yeah, so the word count, right, for, not just for this module, but for all your modules, okay, is a strict word count now. Don't go over the word count, okay? Um, what we've been told to do is if people go over the word count, he's going to where the word count stops and just kind of stop and stop reading there, okay? That kind of potentially really disadvantages of you if it means that we don't get to read your summary bit and stuff, okay? Hopefully we've structured one like this where we give you a template that should help, but just use the word count systems that are on Word and stuff, right, and stick to the word count and you'll be fine, okay? And we just get mentioned, so not just for this module, but for the module as well. Uh, hopefully one of the things that you, you picked up is if you looked at some stuff where, where we're saying that stuff is like a first class piece of work and stuff, we're saying why it's a great piece of work. So this one, for example, they are saying, um, look, this was an excellent piece of work, student took, took care to address all the key requirements of the assignment. Good to see the student connecting chronological and psychological themes with real world problems and policies. Something we keep saying is a really good thing to do because it, you're not just describing stuff then, but you're showing that you, you've understood it, okay? Well, we have a collection of observations and reflection on the topic supported by rich science, diverse set of supporting references. A strong conclusion round up an excellent response to the question, well done, and then just let them know about a minor spelling thing, okay? And if I were to look through, I could see that there's actually loads and loads of kind of references there as well, getting lots of really good items and stuff. Okay? Um, this was another one that got, again, if I, if I went through the description of the front book, loads and loads of references, really well written, makes lots of support, specific points, etc. etc. Okay? And you'll see similar comments on all those that, that did got very good marks. And then <coughs> at the other end, where stuff got lower marks, okay. Um, sorry, that's another cancel over there. I want. Is what, is, what you see very often is this kind of stuff where. Oops. Okay. Um, where there's you know, very little evidence of reading and research, it's very descriptive, the arguments are weak or fully constructive, very limited set of references, etc., etc. And if I were to look through this, okay, and again, there's copies of it circulating around. They're, they're telling me a few things and they've got some real kind of brief information about stuff. But a lot of it is kind of very fragmented. It's the kind of stuff where they've obviously gone back and had to the lectures or whatever. But crucially, we're looking at big bits here where there's no specific or very few specific supporting references. Okay? And then if I look at the end, we've got this kind of little brief conclusion. And okay, a couple of things from the BBC News website, a couple of things from dictionary.com. Yes, we encourage people to have a working definition of what's going on, okay? And a couple of things that else, okay? So you can see, you know, very, very little. And what we see often with the poorer pieces of work is that um, there are things like, you know, the, the, the kind of the poorly written, the lacking in references. And there's some of them that have got the comments on that says, you know what, this, look, this could have been a good piece of work. It almost looked like it could have been good, but it looks like it all the small more around. And the reason I flag that up is because you've got three deadlines, okay, of course we're all happening at the same time, okay? So I and the rest of the teacher staff, we want you to do yourselves proud. And that's important to mean that you have a look at your deadlines and work back from the deadline. And the deadline is like the latest you can submit something, okay? But you can submit some stuff earlier, okay, if you want to do so. Different people work in different ways. But don't try to avoid even stuff until the last minute. What you don't want is to be handing some in, you know, hitting that submit button so it goes into the drop box and thinking, oh God, if I just had another day or two on it, or even another hour or two, it would have made a real difference, okay? Not just for this module, but for all your modules, okay? Try and, this is a, it's a really important bit in your life, okay? Now obviously if you're not well, or you've got any, any seats or fans to put in the background, then, you know, 
if, if it's sufficiently important, we can take account of that. What we can't help with is where people decide not to change their social life, not to do whatever, just for a kind of crucial kind of few weeks while you're getting this stuff in. Right? You can pick up all your social life and all your other stuff after this crucial few weeks that you've got next year, right, when all these deadlines are coming up. We really want you to do the best job. There is nothing to stop us giving out lots of really good grades if all the work's really good, okay? We have to justify why we give people good grades. Hence comments where we say think it's brilliant to see the student connecting real world happenings with theories, etc, etc, that kind of stuff, okay? Or where people have worked through something with specific examples. Right? Where the weaker ones are is that people are not putting supporting references in, people haven't brought any theory in anywhere, okay? So one of the things I do sometimes with assignments when they come in is, um, guess what? I'm looking at it in words, so I've got control F, theory. Oh, theory isn't mentioned once here. All right, RAT, routine activity, uh, and I can do a keyword search just to check that I haven't missed it, right? And if there's a complete absence of any mention at all of any kind of criminological, psychological, social theory, right? then it's going to be a weak piece of work that something's got in, even if it's just two or three sentences where you put something in, yeah, put it in. And again, that's why, and we'll do it again next term, that when we had the lecture and I had that slide up about the checklist, and it said, just make sure you've done various things. So you've got this detailed template and you've got a checklist, right? And if you then avoid kind of careless errors and mistakes like that, right, it's then very easy to get a perfect musical mark. And hopefully, with some encouragement and enthusiasm and finding topics that you like and engage with, you can also get a very good mark, right, which is what I will be wanting. I'm about to let you go. Know one thing that I would like, um, did anybody spot the failure? Did anybody spot the one that's got zero? Okay. So this one here, okay, this is a feedback sheet, provisionally um, a law first, okay. The reason this got zero is because they submitted it, but it wasn't their work. Right? Turn it in, picked it up. I think we'd realise we knew it was problematic anyway, but turn it in made it easy for us to detect. Whatever pressures you come under, okay, fail, and, and of course you're going to look at friends' assignments, of course you may have people who've done this before, you may have relatives who are studying elsewhere. It's all right to be kind of informed by and influenced by stuff, but if you run the risk of trying to simply copy stuff, right, it's a really big risk. That person kind of ruined their degree, ruined their life chances, all that money they put in, all that time and effort because of submitting something that wasn't theirs. Particularly stupid because it was, it was work that had been submitted a couple of years prior by another student at this place, okay? Right, through a lot of One final thing, again, hopefully it won't apply to work in this class, okay? We're aware of essay mills and bought essays, of course we are, right? Again, somebody a couple of years ago bought an essay. So we picked up, it was a bought essay. We parentally analysed it. That person was challenged, failed to come along to the hearing about it. That person got zero for that. Again, effectively failed the degree, throwing away their life chances. Please don't do it, okay? If, you, if you're struggling with deadlines or anything like that, speak to your tutors, seek support from people, don't run the risk of getting caught, okay? Thank you all very much. If you leave your hand out, so I'll let them back in, okay? I will then make them available and have another session next term along with some additional ones. Hopefully you found that useful. Thank you all very much.